From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your call to Hartford, Connecticut, Mr. Dollar. One moment, please. Thanks, operator. Hello? Pat McCracken. Hi, Pat. Johnny Dollar. Oh, good. Still out on the West Coast, Johnny? Practically. Did you clear up that Kincaid matter? Mailed you the final report two days ago. Oh, good. Now, sit tight, because I think I'll have another case for you out there. Yeah? Well, I've got one all lined up for myself. I what? just want to get your okay for an expense account. Well, that depends. Who holds the policy? Holds several policies with the companies that you serve. Who is he? Or is it a she? Oh, it's a he, all right. The most important client I know. Ah, uh, who, Johnny? And certainly the one deserving the most attention. Well, who is it? Me, Pat. What? Me. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Pat McCracken. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of and participation in the yours truly matter. (laughs) Item one, $34. Transportation and all the incidentals I could think of. Los Angeles to Las Vegas, Nevada. I needed a couple of days of relaxation after that Kincaid affair. Item two, $31.40 for my room at the Flamingo Hotel, plus two fancy meals and a couple of drinks to go with them. Item three, 85 cents phone call to my old pal Buster Favor down at Lake Mojave Resort on the Colorado River. Sure glad to hear your voice again, Johnny. Coming down here for some fishing? Buster, how did you guess? Big lunk of bass are practically jumping into the boat. How big? Three to six pounds. Ah, I did that well on the flamingo boat yesterday on Lake Mead. Then I'll arrange for some bigger ones that stand by and wait for you. Want me to drive over and pick you up? No, no, I like to be independent, so I'll rent a car here. Well, in that case, wait for me. Huh? I've got to have three or four days' work done on my car at a garage there in Vegas. So? So I'll drive on up, leave my car, and you and I can come back here together in yours. And when you've had your fill of fishing... Okay, what? Buster, it's a deal. See you when you get here. <laughs> Item four, a hundred dollars deposit on a rental car, a shiny new air-conditioned Cadillac. And remember, Pat, one of your companies holds the insurance on it. Item 5, 2170 for drinks and a big dinner with Buster when he arrived. It was quite late when we hit Route 95 for the drive down to Lake Mojave Resort across the desert. It was still hot after the day's high temperature of 118. You driving so fast to keep up the breeze, Johnny? Maybe you ought to take it a little easier. They patrol these roads pretty good, you know. Are you kidding? I haven't seen a car in nearly 10 miles. Yeah, and you mightn't see one of those law boys until he's right up on top of you. Oh, Buster, you mean they hide on the side road? No, not hide. They patrol some of them. Hey, where do all those side roads go, Buster? Some of them are a little more than wagon trails. Mostly to old mines, Johnny. Some of them 10, 15, 20 miles away up in the hills. Some of them being worked, some of them just... Now, look. Yeah? Over to your right. You see those lights? Look like they're on the side of the mountain? Oh, yeah. That's Haley's tungsten mine up there. Real big operation. A few miles ahead, one of my old friends has a mine. He works it for, uh... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Look in the rear view mirror. I see some other lights. Oh, hey, if you think we're stepping along, that guy behind us is certainly... Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, that flashing red light above the corner of his windshield means a highway patrol car. Also means you better stop. Well, it isn't as though I've been driving all over the road. It's as though you haven't been keeping a sharp enough eye on the speedometer. Okay, start thinking up excuses, Johnny, and they'd better be good. No, no, I'll take it like a man. Shall we get out and greet the minion of the law? No, no, don't. You might think you're trying to pull something. And those laddies carry guns. Just sit here calmly, eyes front, and try to look innocent. Yeah. All right, boys. Huh? Oh, there's nothing in the back seat, officer. I... What? That's right, mister. Nothing but me. And this. Hey, now, wait a minute. You're not... Hey, Johnny. Yeah. I take it that thing's loaded. That's right. Now get going. You were flashing that red light. Flashlight. Food are pretty good tonight. You were making like the highway patrol, and man, is that against the law. Uh, you think that's bad? Just wait till you see what I've got for you. 
I'll start her up. Hey, look, mister. Don't argue with a gun, Buster. Yeah. Buster, remember that. And remember it's aimed right at the back of your head. I'll get going, you. Sure. Here we go. Watch it, watch it, will you? What's the idea of backing up that way? I'm sorry, it's a rental car. I guess I'm not used to it. Oh, uh, well, watch it. Sure, yes, sir. You know. Take it real slow, buddy, and no funnies, or I'll pull this trigger first and figure it out afterwards. Yes, sir, you're the boss. You bet I am. Well, what happens now? Just keep going straight ahead. When I want you to turn off, I'll tell you. Where do you think you're taking us, mister? Where you guys will be a long, long time getting back to civilization. And by then, I'll be loaded and out of the state. Just a plain stick-up, huh? Yeah, that's right. Modern style. Well, look now, just because we're driving a big car if doesn't you mean... got dough enough to gamble big money in Vegas and rent a big car, you got enough for me. You and a few others I'll take over before the night's over. Unless you get tagged first. This car will be plenty easy to identify. You'll find this car back where I stopped you. If you ever get there. Oh, brother, I wish I had a good look at that one of yours. <laughs> Why do you suppose I pulled up behind you and didn't give you a chance to look? Now, let up on that gas. Getting a little nervous? Well, I just want to be sure that if I have to put a hole in the back of your heads, I can get to the wheel before this crate flips over. Pretty smart, aren't you? Yeah. That's why I stay alive and in the chips. Easy now. You see that little side road? Yeah, what about it? Turn off on it. Why not? Hey, Johnny. Yeah. It's the road to old McKinney's mine. Who's McKinney? He's the one. Look, if you guys want to talk, talk up. Or I'll quiet you down permanently. Talking about this lousy road is all. Yeah, well, that's why I picked it, buddy. And, and take it easy. Hit these bumps too fast and this gun's liable to go off. And you wouldn't. Like that now, would you? We continued up the rough, curving road on the side of the mountain. Ten, fifteen miles, I guess. And I could see nothing but the road itself and the shadow of the mountain ahead of us. Turn up that air conditioning, buddy. It's a hot night. Yeah, sure. Listen, we go much further on this road, we'll scrape off the drip pan. You know this road? getting worse and worse is all. This car's built pretty low, you know. Hey, take it easy, I said. How can I? Do you hear that? We don't stop pretty soon. We'll all get stranded out here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you got something there. Okay, buddy, that, that wide spot. You turn us around and stop. And take it easy. Okay, okay. Now what? Just leave the engine running and... Both of you get out the right-hand door. Yeah, sure. Now, look. Shut you... up. From now on, I'm not going to waste any time. Come on, get out. You're not going to leave us out here, I hope. <laughs> That's right. I figure the temperature's still around 100, so you're going to have to take it easy. It'll be long after daylight before you get back down the highway. If we make it at all. Oh, you will. If you go real slow. And if I don't have to use this on you... <laughs> Now, turn around, both of you. Hands up in the air. Now, look, mister, with no water out here in this heat, it'll be murder. It'll be murder if you try anything cute. What? Wait. Nearly a hundred bucks. You don't know this desert heat. Shut up. Now, you. Okay. Here, here, lower that left hand just a little. And be careful. Say, I like that watch. And that ring. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Say, you must have done all right at the gambling tables. Well, easy come, easy go. That's right. Well, well, well. <laughs> this card fall out of your wallet? Yeah. Johnny Dollar Insurance Investigator. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a laugh. A private dick. Just as big a sucker as anybody else. Yeah, I'm laughing. All right, now, boys. Walk. Ten steps, straight forward. Together. Come on, boss. No, sir. Now, look, you, if you think that you're going to... Wait a minute, Buster, don't. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, oh. Why, you dirty oh. rat. Yeah. And one phony move out of you and you're going to get the same. Only right in the back, you hear me? Now, you walk. Walk. Keep going. Walk. 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 
Buster. Buster. By that dirty murdering. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. While her husband was a captain assigned to a unit of the United States Air Force on the island of Okinawa, Mrs. Carolyn Pesaturo went along, but friends and build greater understanding with other people of other lands. A chance to demonstrate her convictions. Her maid, Kikuko Chibana, invited her to her home. Kikuko's mother animated that Mrs. Pesaturo had never done a hard day's work in her life. Not with a manicure job like that. Well, that did it. Carolyn Pesaturo volunteered to do a full day's work, just like any Okinawan housewife. And be no more tired at the end of the day. Bright and early one day, she found herself in the Chibana home. And after washing the breakfast dishes in cold, soapless water, she scrubbed the kitchen floor, prepared meals on a wood-burning stove, drew 25 buckets of water from the well, and worked in the fields for the rest of the day, carrying 50-pound bundles of cut rice stalks through knee-deep mud. Well, she did such a good job, she was invited back for the rice planting. But more importantly, Carolyn Pesaturo planted understanding so that others could reap the harvest of freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, act two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Yours Truly Matter. He'd overtaken Buster Favor and me on Highway 95 out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. That gun pointed me to drive my rented air-conditioned car of a rough winding side road, miles and miles up into the mountains, and finally stopped there, he'd ordered us out into the stifling desert heat. He'd taken our watches and money, and there, in spite of my warning, Buster had turned on him. Then, with a gun aimed at my back, he'd ordered me to walk away from the fallen man. Then he took off in our car. Buster! Buster! Me, the dirty murdering... Just take it easy, Johnny. Oh, what? Buster, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, but I sure had myself worried there for a minute. Pretty lousy shot, wasn't it? Oh, brother, you were crazy to make a dive at him. Only legitimate way I could think of to get down on the ground. What are you talking about? You see these? I can't see a thing, but it sounds like a couple of stones. Yeah, a real sharp one is a kind that cut a tire of ribbons out here. It's chunks of lava. Oh, what? Yeah, I shoved them under the right front wheel. Buster, those tires are probably self-sealing. Sure, so just to make certain, I went to work with this old knife of mine that he didn't seem to want. When he hits a few of those washouts, we went over. Oh, good boy. But on that rough road and with power steering... Don't you worry. You'll have to stop and change a tire before he gets very far. Rubber sealant was already leaking out fast. In the meantime, we better get on on after him. Come on. Are you forgetting he still has that gun? Johnny, I'll show you tricks for getting a man in the desert at night that you never heard of. And don't forget, he'll be the one standing in the light from his car. If he's had to stop. He'll be stopped. If you stumble onto any rocks about the size of a baseball, pick him up. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll show you why I ought to be pitching for the New York Yankees. And while I'm occupying them from one side in the darkness, why... Uh... Okay, Buster, let's go. Easy, easy. This heat will get you faster than you think. Then let's hope it gets him when he stops to change the tire. That's what I'm banking on. If he does. Don't you worry, Johnny. He will. Slowly, carefully, we trudged on down the side of the mountain, conserving our strength. I was glad that Buster knew the ways of the desert. A couple of times we left the winding trail to make shortcuts around big mounds and rocks, around old mine workings. And then we saw them. Car lights, Johnny. You see? Yeah, but they're moving down there, winding back and forth. He hasn't had to stop yet. No, no, I guess... It... Hey, wait a minute. Those lights are coming up the trail. Yeah, why would we be coming back here? I don't know. Come on, toward that little hill on the side. When he comes around it, we'll let him have a handful of rocks through the windshield. Yeah, right. Pick up stones, anything you can get your hands on. Right. Hey, look, there's a good spot on that mound, huh? He won't see us, but we'll see him when he pulls around it. We'll be practically on top of him. Here. 
Here we are. Okay. Okay, good. And don't forget, our eyes are used to the darkness. His won't be. We'll just... Just aim for his windshield, Johnny, with all we've got. But don't forget, he still has that gun. Once we stop him, we'll have the advantage. With a cracked-up windshield, he won't be able to drive. And as long as it stays nice and dark, it... we'll listen. Yeah. Yeah, I am listening. That's... No Cadillac. That sure isn't. You think maybe he's nailed somebody else down on the highway and is bringing him up here? He hasn't had time to get halfway down there yet. Well, then who is? Buster, I'm going to jump down and hail him. But if it is him... You have to take that chance. Johnny, Johnny, wait! That's deep. Hey, Don't stop! Stop! Hey, you, stop, will you please? Huh? Now, what the howling tarnation are you doing out here? What's the matter? You get lost or something? Hey, listen, listen, mister. Did you pass a big sedan on the way up this road? No, wait a minute, young fella. Just who are hey, you? Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Matt McKinney. Huh? Who's that? It's Buster, can't you see? Buster Faber? That's right. Well, <laughs> hey, you gone crazy or something? Wandering around out here this time of night? Look, never mind that. I asked you about a car. Did you pass him? Pass him? I helped him out. Just below that uh, last hill there. What do you mean? Well, he had a flat tire, so I helped him put on his spare. You what? City dude, having a lot of trouble with the heat, so I give him a hand. Oh, no. And him, he give me a ten spot for my trouble. Doggone it, Mac. That guy stole our car and money from us and left us up on the mountain. No kidding. Who's kidding? Well, hmm. well then, maybe I done right at that. What do you mean? Yeah, I've been worrying about it ever since I left him down there. What are you talking about, Mac? Well, me, I got an instinct. Yeah? The same kind of instinct about everything that I got about oh, finding Mac. a gold mine. Uh, uh, Buster, don't you tell the government. But I have took over 40,000 words of war out of my right, mind Mac. up there since the turn of the year. Yeah, well, 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 go on with whatever it is you were getting at. Yeah, come on. Yeah, well, instinct. Now... You take my gate down at the end of the road. Oh, man. That wasn't closed when you come up here, was it? No, come to think of it, I wondered about that. But now, Mac... Usually, when I go into Vegas, like tonight, I close it. But you know something? Tonight, I clean forgot. All right, Mac, get to the point, will you please? Well, the point being that I did lock up the gate when I come off the highway just now. Oh. Eh. Yeah. And I clean forgot to tell that fella I locked it after I fixed his tire. Wait a minute, Mac. Wait a minute. You mean he can't get back on the highway? He sure can't. And he can't break down that gate? <laughs> Not without wrecking his car. All right, then. That's what I was worrying about on the way up the hill. All right, now should, listen. Should... I go back on down and let him out or not. Would you listen, Mac, But please? then I remembered that bulge in his coat pocket like a gun. It was a gun, all right. Yes, sir. And my instinct Mac, told please. me... I don't care what your instinct... Told me I'd better get back to the mine and telephone the county police on account of maybe he'd been prowling around telephone. my mine. Look, look, Mac, you've got a phone at the mine? Son, I got everything up there. Electric... How far is it? On this road, ooh, about three miles. All right, then, listen. But listen. walking, walking across that ridge, ooh, not more than a half mile. Good. Can you make it on foot? <laughs> I ain't been wandering around these hills the past 41 years for nothing. Then, brother, go to it. Huh? Buster and I will take the jeep. Well, now, You go up to the mine and call the police. Tell them to set up roadblocks, whatever they want to do. And stop a 1956 Chevy. It's gray and white, license CGJ158. You got that? Sure. CGJ158, a gray and white. Now, Look, Mac, now, I'll wait. pay you for the use of this Jeep. Anything you like. Fifty bucks, a hundred. Oh, yeah? He's not kidding, Mac. Huh? You sure? You know him, Buster? His word's as good as mine, better. And, and he's kind of a lawman. Oh, well. Uh, now, why did you so tell get me. Get on that... up there to that mine. Yeah, Matt, please. You can. Tell you? the police what happened to us. Give them that description 1956 Chevy CGJ 158. That's the car the crook is using. Got it. Got and it. And you then go to it. Right, Buster. Come on, One Buster. More way. Yeah. <laughs> and you better let me drive. Okay, okay, bro. Okay. Hold on to your seat, and I'll show you how one of these things can really take these roads. What do you mean? You've only hit the road every 20 feet so far. Hold on, Johnny. You ain't seen nothing. Buster wasn't kidding. And Max's old Jeep would have put a mountain goat to shame. To this day, it's a wonder to me how he ever held the thing together. To say nothing of how we managed to stay aboard. You think 90 miles an hour on the open road is a thrill? 
you should try 20 per on that old wagon trail. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, nothing. We got to catch up on that guy. No, what I mean is, how'd you ever know the make and license of his car? There wasn't enough light when he stopped us to see a thing. Why do you suppose I put the car into reverse when we started? Huh? Doing that turned on the backup lights. Backup lights? Sure. Gave me a good look at his car in the rearview mirror. Johnny, you're all right. Oh, hey, how much more of this is there? We ought to get to the gate any minute. The gate? Buster, we ought to be shot. What's the matter? Oh, Mac didn't give us the key to that gate. We'll be locked in as well as that bandit. Well, you don't think he's just going to be sitting there, do you? Oh, yeah, you're right. He'll have to go on to his own car on foot. Which gives us more time, Johnny, to big advantage. Now, look. No, you look. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Either he didn't see the gate or he tried to plow right through it. And look what it did to that nice car. Come on. Okay. Over this way, Buster. All right. Stay out of the Jeep's headlights. Circle around. He may still be in that car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we'll take it easy. And pick up a rock or two. I'm way ahead of you, brother. I don't see any sign of him. No. He's probably hooping it down the highway to his own car. We're going to take no chances. Right. That kind of his look for... Right, he's now. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, well, he's gone. Yeah. Oh, brother, what he's done to this car. Somebody's going to pay a pretty penny. The insurance company. Now, come on. We'd better light out after him. We'll use the Jeep. But, Buster, if this big car couldn't knock down we'll that drive Jeep... drive off the road and cut through the fence if old Mac had a pair of pliers and a toolbox. Come on. <laughs> There were pliers in the toolbox, all right, and a pair of wire cutters, too. But it took us longer than it should have to find a place where even the Jeep could navigate through the fence. Finally, though, we got out on the highway. All right, not too fast, Buster. If he's still on foot, I want to be sure we see him first. You know what I'd like to see? What's that? The lights from a couple of patrol cars coming this way. You think they'd have time to get there, even if Mac phoned him right away? Yeah, that's true. With our little pal with a gun. We ought to come on his car pretty soon. Unless he's already got to it and taken off. I just don't think so, Johnny. He'd try to move too fast in this heat, he'd collapse. Must be somewhere along this highway. Hide, maybe. Under one of those storm bridges along there. No, no, I think he's too smart for that. With a racket like his, he has to keep moving. Maybe he's bummed a ride back to his car. He's on his merry way again. Well, we'll soon find out. The place he stopped is right ahead on the curve behind that hill just beyond that next bridge. All right, then take it easy, will you? Yeah. Maybe we ought to stop the other side of this bridge. Say, long about here. Buster, yeah? there was something underneath that bridge. Looked like a car. Well, your eyes are deceiving you now. Let's stop right here. Let's keep going. What? Now what? Just keep driving until you get to my car. Get it. Oh. Why don't you put that thing down? Listen, how did you get in the back of this Jeep? While you two bird brains are prowling around the cab there at the gate playing detective. Uh, pretty smart, aren't you? That's right. Like I told you, that's how I keep alive. It's more than I can say for you boys. What's that mean? Pull up. There's my car. Pull up right beside it. Now look, Mr. Don't argue with him, Buster. Okay, here's your car. All right, now. Give me those keys. Come on, come on. Yeah, and you kill your headlights. Kill them. Okay. Now, look. Things got balled up tonight. I I got held up too long. Now, I heard you say something about getting word to the cops. So I got to get out of here. I got to get out of the state. I don't know how you guys got the Jeep away from that crazy old man. I, I didn't plan on you getting down off that mountain before daylight, see? But it's too bad you did. Oh, you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because I didn't take a chance on you getting away now. I can't. Especially you, Mr. Private Eye. Well, thanks. That means you think I might find some way to get the police on you in a hurry. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I have. Ah, no chance. Before I leave here, you're gonna be dead. From this. You're out of your mind. Yeah, Buster, I think he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, stop waving that gun. One shot, just one shot, and you'll be dead so fast. Oh, yeah, wise guy, how? You know, Buster, I was right. Huh? What, Johnny? There was a car parked under that bridge back there, a police car. You're crazy. Oh, Oh, yeah, Johnny, I see what you mean. What? What do you see? You don't think you're the only one who can hide in a back seat, do you? What are you talking about? Old Mac must have really got that phone call through in a hurry. What are you talking about? That officer there. Oh, that old bluff. The officer waiting there in the back seat of your you're car nuts. with his gun aimed straight at your head. Oh, yeah? Well, there. Oh, oh. 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 Boy, I... Took a 
lot of nerve, Johnny, and throwing that rock in his windshield when he turned was just enough... Hey, where'd you get that rock, anyhow? <laughs> For some silly reason, I'd been hanging on to that rock ever since we started down the side of the mountain. Silly reason, huh? Not by a long shot, no, sir. Oh, and what do you know? Here comes a patrol car. <laughs> the one you were supposed to see hiding under that bridge. You know something, Buster? I really did think I saw a car under there. Oh, no. No, no, really, honest. I think I saw it back there. Expense account total. Oh, dear ahead, Pat. Including incidentals and my fare back to Hartford, $528. And that includes 50 bucks to old man McKinney for the use of his Jeep and 8150 for the repairs to Buster's car by way of thanks for his help. The car rental agency will present you with its own damage claim on the CAD. Oh, and of course, the windshield on that Chevy will have to be replaced. You see, it was also insured with one of your companies. So, Pat, you can just charge off this case to recovery of that car. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a small round piece of metal, a coin. Face value, 50 cents. Insured value, $20,000. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, Chet Stratton, and Junius Matthews. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.